Euglycemic diabetic ketoacidosis is a serious complication of diabetes occurring in both type 1 and type 2 diabetes. It is characterized by euglycemia despite severe metabolic acidosis and presence of ketones. SGLT2 inhibitors, a class of newer oral anti-diabetic medications, can directly lead to euglycemic DKA. Examples of SGLT2 inhibitors include canagliflozin, dapagliflozin, empagliflozin, and ertugliflozin. SGLT2 inhibitors can directly and indirectly stimulate glucagon secretion. SGLT2 inhibitors are drugs used to treat type 2 diabetes by inhibiting glucose reabsorption in the proximal renal tubules, leading to urinary glucose excretion and a decrease in blood glucose levels. The mechanism of euglycemic DKA with SGLT2 inhibitors involves the lowering of insulin production and an increase in glucagon secretion, which promotes a shift of glucose to fat metabolism and stimulates lipolysis and ketogenesis. With SGLT2 inhibitor use, euglycemic DKA can easily be triggered by surgery, infection, trauma, major illness, reduced food intake, persistent vomiting, gastroparesis, dehydration, and reduced insulin dosages. In May 2015, the United States Food and Drug Administration issued a drug communication warning about the increased risk of euglycemic DKA with the use of SGLT2 inhibitors. DM patients taking SGLT2 inhibitor with malaise, weakness, dyspnea, nausea, vomiting, drowsiness, altered mental status, or general discomfort, should undergo DKA screening. DKA screening tests include serum pH and blood or urine ketone testing. Euglycemic DKA usually exhibits normal glycemia with finger stick glucose below 250 mg per deciliter. Laboratory evaluation of euglycemic DKA includes 1. CBC, electrolytes, glucose, chloride, and osmolarity. Anion gap calculation is important for precise management. 2. BUN, creatinine, AST, and bilirubin. 3. Arterial or venous blood gases. 4. Serum or urine ketones and serum beta-hydroxybutyric acid. Note that, the urine ketone screening cannot detect beta-hydroxybutyrate. 5. Lactic acid. 6. Blood and or urine cultures, if infection is suspected. 7. Chest radiograph, and ECG to exclude ACS. Treatment for euglycemic DKA is similar to typical DKA. SGLT2 inhibitor should be discontinued as soon as euglycemic DKA is diagnosed. After volume expansion with crystalloid, the foundation of therapy is a combination of dextrose and insulin infusion until acidosis resolves. Insulin infusion is crucial and should not be avoided because of normal glucose levels. Ketosis does not resolve with intravenous hydration alone. Sodium bicarbonate infusion is not indicated. Potassium should be carefully monitored as total body potassium will likely be depleted, and intravenous supplementation of potassium and other electrolytes may be needed. Insulin should not be administered unless potassium is above 3 milliequivalent per liter. 20 to 40 milliequivalent per liter of KCL may be added if initial potassium is below 5 milliequivalent per liter. Check finger stick glucose every 1 hour and electrolytes every 4 hours at a minimum. Patients may require ICU admission. Treatment with intravenous fluid resuscitation and insulin should continue until the anion gap closes and acidosis has resolved. Although SGLT2 inhibitors have been shown to have benefits on cardiovascular and kidney health, they are not recommended to be used in type 1 DM because of the high risk of euglycemic DKA.
Euglycemic DKA can occur in pregnant women even without the use of SGLT2 inhibitors. Euglycemic DKA in pregnant women is associated with an increased maternal and fetal mortality risk if not promptly identified and treated. Fetal mortality rate is estimated to be 10 to 35 percent. In conclusion, euglycemic DKA can occur in both type 1 and type 2 DM. SGLT2 inhibitors can directly result in euglycemic DKA. Early diagnosis and treatment can significantly improve morbidity and mortality. Vigilant monitoring of capillary or urine ketones by patients can diagnose euglycemic DKA before it becomes severe. Treatment includes a combination of dextrose and insulin infusion until acidosis resolves. SGLT2 inhibitor should be discontinued as soon as euglycemic DKA is diagnosed. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comment section.